Ching. As we gather together here, I have a few brief announcements. First of all, I'd like to welcome everyone here today as we celebrate All Saints Day. We remember the saints who have gone before over the last year, but especially we remember all the saints of God and yearn for that day when we too will be reunited with all those who are pleased, who are uh, happy, who are perfected in the kingdom. We give thanks to God for caring for us and caring for our loved ones, and we rejoice in the knowledge that they are with their Savior. We come together too in the announcements in our bulletin, uh, you will find a, a number of different events that are going on this week. Those standard events like our Wednesday at 3 o'clock uh, worship service slash Bible study. Um, we also have an 11 o'clock service here at St. Paul's uh, today. We are, at least for today, since it's colder outside, going to spread out in St. Paul's Center for a communion service. And we also continue to have Sunday school. Um, some of you know that Brandywine Heights School District is going all virtual as of, well, as of now. Um, we intend to still have our Sunday school classes. They are social distanced. They are uh, also offered uh, virtually, um, but please know that that's available, especially for those young ones that are going to be struggling a little bit more for their, um, their social contact, I guess. Uh, we want to at least let you know that in these small groups um, that Sunday School is, is still available. Kim, I understand you have an announcement. I do, Pastor. Thank you. Um, the announcement I want to make is for the Reach Out and Read program that we did with the children and the members here of our church. Um, the books go to um, children in need, and uh, we finally got those books delivered. Uh, we had some changes with the COVID uh, situation, but um, they finally got to where they needed to be. And I spoke with the, uh, the doctor that's running it, and because of the changes, they had to start it over. Our books were the only ones that they have. So because of God's grace and everyone's generosity, we were able to give them over 300 books and about $200 that they could go and immediately give out to the children in need for their program. So with their thanks, they wanted to me to tell you that God bless each one of you and thank you so much for your kindness and generosity. And I thank you as well. So thank you very much, St. Paul's. Thank you. Um. You said they want to start over? They had to start, oh, start the program over, not the drive over. No, not the thing. Okay. They, they, they had to start the program over, and they did. And now it's reestablished for Lehigh Valley Wonderful. and surrounding counties. Wonderful. And I'm sure there's a continuing need there, so consider that as one of uh, the uh, arenas for, for supporting um, with your time, talents, and treasure. Are there any other announcements? Seeing that there are none, we begin our worship together today on page 211 with the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Please rise and further note that it is hymn 422. Correct, Nancy? That's our first hymn. It, it, I think we accidentally got um, uh, 211 from the page number. That's not the first hymn. Don't look at the board. We gather together brothers and sisters in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter. As for me, Daniel, my spirit within me was anxious, and the visions of my head alarmed me. I approached one of those who stood there and asked him the truth concerning all this. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of the things. These four great beasts are four kings who shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever, and ever. Then I desire to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the rest, exceedingly terrifying with its teeth of iron and claws of bronze, and which devoured and broke into pieces and stamped what was left with its feet. And about the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn that came up, and before which three of them fell, The horn had eyes and had a mouth that spoke great things, and that seemed greater than its companions. As I looked, this horde made war with the saints and prevailed over them until the Ancient of Days came, and the judgment was given for the saints of the Most High, and the time came when the saints possessed the kingdom. Then he said, as for the fourth beast, There shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all the kingdoms, and it shall devour the whole earth and trample it down and break it into pieces. As for the ten horns, out of this kingdom, ten kings shall arise, and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the former ones, and he shall put down three kings, He shall speak words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. He shall think to change the times and the law, and they shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. But the court shall sit in judgment, and his dominion shall be taken away to be consumed and destroyed to the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heavens shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. His kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom, and all the dominions shall serve and obey him. Here's the end of the matter. As for me, David, my thoughts greatly alarmed me, and my color changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. The word of the Lord.
Our second reading is from the book of 1 John, the first chapter. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him no darkness is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. The word of the Lord. Shall we go? The Holy Gospel for this day comes from the book of St. John, the sixth chapter. Now the Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say unto you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds upon my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. This is the gospel of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Praise you, o Christ. You may be seated, and our youth may come forward. Come on, come on, come on. Good morning. You guys sit over here a little bit further apart, just to make sure we all stay healthy. We're here. There you go. So, good morning. How are you all today? Good, good, good. You're great, wonderful. You did? No, you didn't. You did not have a good morning. But did you have a good night last night? What? I didn't know. That's right. Somebody crawled into our bed and kicked me all night. And it wasn't my wife. Just clearing that up. And Tabby. Yeah. What did you do last night, though? Did you, did you do anything really cool last night? What would we, you know, do? Ooh. Trunk or treating or trick or treating, trunk or treating? I'm sorry, I'm trying to confuse you. Did you go to other people's homes and knock? Or did you do that big thing in Topton where they had all the... Gister? Okay, you went to some of your family members. You went to Grandma's house. Yeah. Cool, you made spiders. I know, I was there, but... This isn't for me, really. This is for us. 
So we were making bats and spiders, and we ate candy, and we visited with family members, right? And why did we do all that yesterday? It was Halloween. It was Halloween. Does anybody know what Halloween means? Costumes and candy. <laughs> That's a great answer, Gabriel. It's not quite right, but they call it Halloween because all the pumpkins are hollow. <laughs> Remember that one. I, I mean, that one could be a really great one. I like that. It's actually hallow, H-A-L-L-O, and the word hallow means holy, like a holy eve. Do you, know, do you know when we celebrate Christmas? Well, no, no, no. Why do we celebrate Christmas Eve? It's the night before Christmas. So if yesterday was All Hallows Eve, that means today is a special day. Today is called All Saints Day. All Saints Day. And last night was All Hallows Eve, All Saints Eve. Okay? We celebrate that because today we celebrate the lives of the saints of God, those who have uh, you know, become a part of God's kingdom in heaven, those who are holy, those who have been perfected, those whom we so desperately wait being reunited with in that same kingdom. And so to make sure that we only have saints today, we have to make sure we scare off all the bad spirits. So we dressed up yesterday to actually chase away the devil. Right? Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever thought about all those bad spirits and all those things out there that we don't like, that we're scared of? Your job yesterday was to scare the bad things away. I don't want to see a monster. I don't want to see a spider. I don't want to see a bat in here right now. I don't want to see any of those scary things. You were supposed to scare them away, did you? Well, good. You won't see one here this morning. Did you scare them away? Okay, you didn't scare the angels away. That's good. They're here today. Did you scare the monsters away? Okay, so if, you're, if you haven't done that yet, can you make sure that you come up with the scariest costumes next year? To make sure that you scare away all the monsters? McDonald's man. McDonald's man, yes. Great, wonderful. So here's the deal. We need to pray together to have the strength to really be scary to the devil. We don't, we don't want the devil anywhere around us or around our loved ones, okay? We want to be saints of God, so we have to try not to do bad things, okay? We have to try to be nice and kind to each other. We have to try and follow the word of Jesus, which says love each other, right? So we need strength for that, don't we? It's not always easy, is it? No, no. Let, let's pray to God that we, can be, that we can be actually really, really scary to the devil, and that we could be those saints in light. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, it is so tempting in the world today to, you know, fill our bellies with candy and, and really be angry when we don't get what we want and, well, not listen at all. There's all kinds of things that we are tempted to do, and that's just us adults. But Lord, Lord, we need you to lead us in your ways ways of love and compassion, ways that really scare the devil off. Lord, make us your saints in light. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah, and you did it, so good. I don't know why he suggests that he's tempted to be annoying. I mean, I don't think he was not annoying to be tempted to do it. Right, buddy? Okay. But is this uh, not in part kind of some of the truth of, of why we get to where we are today, why we hear the lessons that we do, and, and why All Saints Day is so uh, powerful and so important? We remember today all those individuals who fought the good fight, who ran the race and, and, and finished ran through that, that finish line, finished strong, finished deep in their faith. And as such, the moment they crossed that line became citizens of the kingdom of God. Not that they weren't already one step in that kingdom, 
Let's face it, through our baptisms and through our faith, God forgives us, God justifies us, and God lets us know that we are not entirely of this world anymore, but that we are also of the kingdom of God. But boy, in those final moments of life, when we hold true to the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, we know that we, for once and for all, inherit the kingdom in its fullest. Our bodies, minds, and spirits are no longer a part of this broken world in any way, but fully realized in their heavenly home. What joy it is to know that. For as we look at the book of Daniel and this reading that to us, well, maybe we aren't really used to hearing it from Daniel, Some of us may know Daniel well enough to know it was very apocalyptic. It talked about the end times. In fact, Revelation looks very similar. And maybe that's where we remember hearing stories about beasts with many heads and multiple horns and kingdoms that would arise and some that would fall. And that one horn that would sound really, really great. That kind of false prophet, antichrist kind of horn that one thing that will sound wonderful and draw so many in, that will tempt even the saints to question. Here it is in Daniel. While some of us may think that the world is rapidly approaching Daniel's vision, I'm not so sure that I agree. It is certain that there are, well, beastly realities when we look around the globe. We might call COVID a a kind of side effect of that beastliness. What I certainly mean here is the way in which we as brothers and sisters in Christ view the world as broken, a world where people are at each other's throats, where people are ready and willing to rise up and topple the kingdom next door to them where, well, beasts, quite literally, seem to be rising. It's not quite there yet. In fact, I don't believe that I will live to see it. Yet we can all relate to Daniel, all relate to this idea of feeling greatly alarmed, maybe even having our color change. Like Daniel, we keep the matter in our heart. But what really is important in this lesson from Daniel is not that Daniel was troubled by his vision, not that these words might cause us a little bit of, well, fear, but what God says in response to the questions. What really is that horn? And what will it end up doing? What is this kingdom? Where does it come from? And what is it all about? God says this, the court shall sit in judgment and the dominion of the one who has conquered the earth, that one will lose. Their dominion will be taken from them, consumed and destroyed. The kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Who inherits the kingdom of God. Who is given the kingdom that now encompasses all of creation? Not the evil, not the broken, not the horns that can shout so loudly that everyone wants to be a part of them. No, the kingdom of God conquers all. And the saints are in ownership. Those who in faith have run the race of life and finished. Those dearly departed loved ones whom we remember today, they inherit the kingdom of God. And God says, here is the end of the matter. There's no more debate. There's no more discussion. There's no more to understand. In the end, all the saints of the Most High win and inherit the kingdom of God. Not some, not those that were able to uh, persevere in the battle, 
Uh, not um, those who happen to uh, make it to church each and every week of their lives. No, all the saints inherit the kingdom of God. As 1 John speaks to us, we can relate. We feel as if there is darkness in the world. And if any of us sitting here can honestly say that we have never felt a dark moment, I would applaud you. I would want to know your secrets. I would want to understand how you were able to get through even one day of life without feeling somehow as if the darkness wanted you or was ready to overcome. We understand that. We understand Daniel's vision. We understand this feeling of darkness and disappointment and fear and doubt in the world. We're living it right now. Whether in regards to COVID, or next Tuesday, or whatever it is we've decided to be scared of. God gives us another message. Not only is the matter over, the saints in light inherit the kingdom. But no darkness will overcome us. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we walk in the light, if we look at the darkness and say, you are not in control of me, I cast you out, I am ready to dress up in the scariest of costumes and scare you out, devil. I don't want you here. I am going to walk in the light, the sunlight just seems to be shining right at this moment. Thank you, God. If we walk in the light, not only are we forgiven of the, of the darkness that may or may not have tainted our hearts for one moment or another, not only are we forgiven, but we inherit everlasting life. And that's for our loved ones who have gone before us, and that is for us who await the kingdom. There is a time when we will all be together again in joy in a kingdom that is not only the kingdom that conquers all others, but is an everlasting kingdom. The end of the matter. The kingdom of God is forever. And how do we know? How do we know that we shall be together? How do we know that we have this faith? How do we know that we are walking in light? The Gospel of John gives us one answer. As we partake in the body and blood, the one communion of saints... If we partake in the body and the blood, if we partake in our lives of faith in Christ, if we come together in that communion, gathering together in fellowship, and we take into ourselves the body and the blood, the true food and the true drink that is Jesus Christ our Lord, we are in him and he is in us. Whoever feeds upon this bread, the bread that is Jesus Christ our Lord, the true bread from heaven, if we feed upon this bread, follow his word, live lives according to his ways, then we will live forever. It can't be any more simple than that. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever will live forever in the kingdom of the Most High, an everlasting kingdom. It's the end of the matter. Partake, be a part, believe in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and you will be saved. There is no doubt. There is nothing to fear in the darkness if you are in the light. So let us today and maybe tomorrow, and maybe all the way up until next All Hallows' Eve. Be prepared to be our brightest. Put on those very raiments that we hear of in our prayer today and throughout the psalm, that the saints will, will be raised again in beautiful, pure white raiments. Put on your, your brightest clothing and cast out the things that tempt you. Cast out the demons that seem to want to bury you in fear and doubt and concern. We don't need any of that, for we have a kingdom that will conquer anything, that this earth can throw at it. We have a life that can never be snuffed out. We rejoice today with all the saints as they have gone first into that beauty 
And we pray and remember their experiences. We remember their teachings. Not because they knew better than Jesus. Not because, well, if we pray to them, we'll end up um, getting what we want or being protected by them. We know these things don't happen that way. We know that all of the saints are humans like us who have gone into the kingdom. So we don't pray to them. We pray to Jesus. We know they weren't perfect, but they are now. And yet, each and every one of the names that we will read and celebrate today, as I have known them, were faithful people. Were people strong with integrity. Loved just things. They were people that lived their faith and showed their faith as something important in their lives. And one step further, showed their faith as something that would be important and helpful and life-saving in your lives. These saints are now with all the other saints who have gone before. And while we may not think of it in this way, I believe Martin Luther would encourage us to think of it exactly this way. We have a St. Paul's Lutheran church here. The name is on the side of the building. We recognize St. Paul as the very Paul in the Bible. We think of St. Paul, we think of some of the other saints like Luke and John, and we think of these immensely holy human beings. We think of perhaps St. Teresa or even St. Mary, the mother of God. And we think of, well, just perfect examples of those who walk in the light of Christ. I tell you today that in our Lord Jesus Christ, all who attain the kingdom are saints of exactly the same caliber, exactly the same faithfulness, exactly the same inheritance. Our brothers and sisters whom we honor and remember today are arm in arm, hand in hand, side by side, fighting the good fight with Paul and Mary, and all the saints that now adorn the heavenly homes. And so we rejoice, and we say amen. Amen. At this time, we will read the names of the saints who have gone before us this past year, and for each I will ask if we could have the toll of the bell. Just one, one ring, please. And we'll pause for a moment. David will be bringing the rose to uh, family members. Obviously, some of those family members may not be here. If you see that no one is rising up to take a rose for an individual and you have access to one of those uh, family members or what have you, um, please you know, volunteer to take the rose to them. You will see in your bulletin that there are full names. I will go down the list reading only the first name. This is just in case anybody wants privacy for their family members since we are live uh, on Facebook. We remember Betty. We remember Dolly. We remember Anna.
we remember Bernice. We remember David. We remember Dennis. We remember Esther. We remember George. We remember Joyce. We remember Judy. We remember Michael. We remember Stephen. We remember Michael. We remember Pamela. We remember Ruth. We remember Larry. Let us pray. We remember before you, O Lord, this day, these beloved saints, brothers and sisters in our companionship and in our journeys upon this earth. We thank you, most importantly, Lord, for their witness of faith in our midst, for the ways in which they taught us to be compassionate and kind, that through their love in Christ Jesus, we too might see new and different ways to understand our own walk of faith, that God creates and lifts up his saints in order, dear Lord, to show us all an example of love, joy, celebration, and true life. Lord, by your Son's eternal light, may we walk, and by the love that comes first from you, may we live. We thank you for all the saints in light, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And now, joining together, let us sing our hymn of the day, hymn number 485.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Gracious and eternal Lord, we thank you upon this day for all that you have made, for the beauty of the changing seasons, for the joys that come with the harvest, for all that you provide for us to eat, and even, dear Lord, for the clean waters that you allow us to drink. Perhaps, O oh Lord, we thank you most for the fruits of the vine and for the bread that we make from the grain. Dear Lord, for the blood and the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, for our very salvation. Lord, you have created not only this world, this cosmos, and everything that is within it. You have created for us an eternal home in your kingdom. We have so very much to be thankful for. Help us to realize that the challenges we face in our environment, in our communities, with health and well-being, or challenges that have not been sent by you, or illnesses, diseases, viruses that have not been created by you per se, but Lord, have been made worse, have been brought to the forefront, have been broken by human sin. That, Lord, you have created this world perfect. You have seen that it is good, and you have said as much. And so, Lord, what we need to understand and what you need to equip us to be able to do is to heal this world. Give us the knowledge to create things that are helpful, things that care both for our needs as well as the land around us. Help us to understand and know different ways to till the soil, to plant and to harvest. Help us find ways to produce what we need that do not pollute the rivers and the seas. Help us, dear Lord, avoid the temptation of needing everything that makes our lives easy, even if it is at the expense of all other life. Help us to do and and experience the things that are good in life, enjoying creation, taking a walk in the woods or sitting by the banks of a stream. Let us begin this day, Lord, to listen to the ways in which creation talks to us. Let us hear your words in all that we see. Help us to be wise stewards of all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, gracious God, we heard in our preludes a peace that we all know. Shall we gather at the river? And yes, Lord, I think the answer is, well, absolutely. Let us gather at the river. Let us gather and not only listen to how creation is speaking back to us, but more importantly, Lord, let us listen for the words of the saints as they join us by the bank. Let us remember and rejoice in the ways in which we see others living lives according to your will. Let us gather at the river and embrace one another in love. Lord, 
let us be seen through until that day when we can and we shall gather and join one to another with a kiss of peace, not six feet distant, not with a mask covering our faces, but without fear, in the boldness of your love, do so without chance of illness. Lord, we talk not only of the river that may exist down the road, but we talk more specifically about the river that flows from the throne of God. We can't wait for that day, Lord, when you rid us of the burdens of life and bring us to everlasting life by this great river. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, you know this world suffers. Just as we do individually, we suffer as peoples, as nations, as communities. There are many things in the world today that we will see as broken. But Lord, it only, it only falls prey to darkness if we are not walking in the light. Help us not only to walk in the light that is your word, but help us to shine it forth. As your saints, Lord, let us not hide what you have given us underneath a basket. Let us remove all that might darken us and let us shine forth. Lord, you know there are people who are desperately afraid and concerned. In the middle of this pandemic, we pray that you would help us be beacons of light and hope. Dear Lord, there are days that we might wonder why exactly it is that people are so focused on earthly kings that they're terrified about Tuesday and our nation's election. You speak to us loud and clear in Daniel today. There will be kings. And eventually there will be one, not on Tuesday, but eventually someday there will be one who will rise up and the earth will be conquered. But even that one does not win. Your kingdom wins. And so perhaps we have no idea, or at least in our lives of faith, no clear understanding of why the world is in turmoil. And yet it is. Lord, we need to rise above colors like blue and red and become people that walk in light, in pure white raiments, people that strive for the color that is of purity and peace. No other color has it, Lord. Lord, your light, that is the only thing that we are to walk in. And when we walk in that light, it doesn't matter what we look like. It doesn't matter where we're from. It doesn't matter what our ideas and our opinions are. It doesn't matter how we voted or whether or not we went to the school of our choice. It doesn't matter whether we have spent time virtually or in person. What matters is that we're walking in your light. And so, Lord, we pray this week that we all would be beacons of love, of kindness, of compassion, of the truth of salvation in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Make us your saints this day and forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the saints, Lord, we thank you. These beautiful, incredible people of God that we have known and that we one day will rejoice in being present with again. Lord, thank you for the saints. We pray especially this day and give you thanks for Betty and Dolly, for Anna and Bernice, for David and Dennis, Esther and George, for Joyce and Judy, Michael and Stephen, for Pamela and Michael, Ruth and Larry and for all others who have gone before, whom we name now, either silently in our hearts or out loud upon our lips. Lord, your servant Martin Luther spoke often these words. 
that we as Christians are simul justus et peccator. We are simultaneously saints and sinners. Lord, as we walk this world, we are just that. We are sinners made saints in you. And so we pray also this day for the saints who remain in this life, who are in need of your healing touch. We pray for Aiden and George, Bob and Brody, Cookie and Craig, Cynthia, Dale and Donald, Dorothy and E. George, George and Corey, Gloria and Greta, Jim and Joyce, Ernest, Kelly, Kenneth and Kevin, Zach and Larry, Layla, Mary, Nicholas and Olive, Elena and Patty, Pamela, Penny and Quinn, Richard, Robert and Rose, Scott and Shana, Shirley and Stephanie, Tyler, Vincent, Travis, Jim, and George. We pray for all imprisoned peoples, all unborn children, as well as parents preparing for childbirth or grieving the loss of a pregnancy. We pray for our military personnel serving around the world and their loved ones waiting for them at home. And we pray, O oh Lord, this day for all those who are struggling at the end of life, who are in places where they are making difficult decisions. We pray for all those who are dealing with illnesses that require decisions to be made about treatments and pray that you would help them to make the right ones. We pray for all those women out there that are considering abortion and we pray that they might see in their child a saint of God. Lord, we pray that you would help those mothers who are struggling to make the right decisions. Whatever they may be, you alone know them. Gracious God, we pray for each other. None of us are perfect. None of us have a perfect understanding of you or your word. None of us have opinions that are without some sort of flaw. Lord, we need to do this life. We need to get through it together. We need you and your word. We need a diversity of thought. We need people that will say and do and explore different ideas and pursue different paths. Help us to do all that in love. Heal your communities. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, for all of these things and all else that only you know that we need, we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now together, let us share a sign of peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And now let us share a contactless peace. Unless, of course, you're either married to or related to the person next to you. We'll do that. Peace, Nancy. God bless. And now as we prepare to take our offering, we remember that not only do we uh, seek to care for our families and our friends, but we seek to care for our whole community, whether it's the community of, of the congregation or the congregations of, of Christ throughout this world, whether it is a, a ministry um, that we find in our communities, a social ministry, um, such as, as raising awareness and raising funds for books, for, for programs that benefit students, um, or simply uh, any other organization that you can think of that is important to you. Let us make sure we open up our hearts and minds to find the ways that our time, talents, and treasure may benefit this world. Let us offer up our gifts.
love. We give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light that we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us all now and forever. Let us go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord and to love and to serve one another. Thanks be to God.